time for Cigar Talk, the fastest growing cigar show in the nation. Whether you're a new cigar enthusiast or a cigar aficionado, we have something for everyone. Bringing you the best interviews, cigar reviews, and weekly giveaways. So grab yourself a cigar. It's time to light them up. Welcome back, Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We have a special episode for you guys. We are actually in Big Spring, Texas at the one and only Train Car Cigar Bar, man. We got Brent here with us. How you doing, brother? I'm great. It's great to be back on the show. I'm loving what you guys are doing. Rob. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. You know, yeah. we are, you know, we're huge fans of what you guys do. We always have been. And we were talking about it before the show started, trying to figure out how we actually met because we met before cigar talk and we met i'm pretty sure before the train car i, I think you were still that, working so. at your other job mm-hmm. and you were talking about mm-hmm. and then bam and yeah we were doing both and then I, I did actually do both jobs for almost two years really yeah we opened in december of 2016 and i finally uh only did this solely in august of 2018 so, wow yep so just short of two years Wow, Which is, time flies, a long time. doesn't it? it oh, it's wild. It's, it's wild. like you look back and be like, wow, I, we've been doing this a long time. Mm-hmm. And in retrospect, it's not a long time, but it is a long oh, time because of everything that's gone on in between. It feels like both. It feels like it just happened. Right. But it also is like it's a whole it's a whole other lifetime that, that we've been doing this well, now. It's and like so. part of it is the time and part of it is the grind. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, you've done oh, so much. It's a hustle. you got to hustle, but it's, it's, it's a good hustle. And it's fun working for yourself and and doing your own thing. It is. It definitely has its benefits. So, also, you're the one that's responsible for everything. Yep. So, well, it, that's the biggest thing is that I think people are always like, "Oh, I'd love to own a cigar shop." They have, all you they do have is no sit idea. And smoke. That's what they think. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> I have enjoyed a lot fewer cigars here than I thought I or anticipated I would. I might have smoked as many, but get full on enjoyment Enjoy. when right. you go to a lounge and you sit and you talk. And I, and I get that quite often still, um, but I'm always, you know, looking over your shoulder, making sure that a trash doesn't need to be emptied, making sure a customer doesn't need to be helped, making sure somebody new didn't show up and that uh, whoever's working is, is with another customer, that if I'm here, I can't see them just sitting there kind of, you know, waiting and I jump into action. And so, you know, we'll be enjoying our time. And Right. I, you, know, you know, what's funny is at the leaf before they moved, now I'm always in the back, so I don't see a lot of people. But I would be up front and like you'd see guys come in and it's like they didn't have a lot of experience and I'd start talking to them, finding out what they've smoked. And it's like I just that personality type where I can't let go. Exactly. It's like I got to help if I can help. Yeah, you'd be that liaison and you'd you know walk them through and tour the humidor and do some of that. It's, it's to the point now. Yet I was at the Leaf yesterday and on my way out, a customer was like, hey, what what special cigar you got for me this week? And I was like, do I know this guy? <laughs> <laughs> and apparently I turned him on to like two or three sticks before, and I Back was like, day. well, have you smoked this? Because if you haven't smoked this, you're missing out. And then we went into a like 10, 20-minute conversation, and I was like, oh, my wife's calling. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that's just the camaraderie that we share with each other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you don't find that in very many communities. And other businesses, no. Well, I mean – we have that, and I, I imagine almost every shop does have that. Those customers that, when they see somebody going through the humidor, they'll they'll you know walk them along if there isn't someone there to do it. Say they're tied up with someone else, or for us, you know, whether you're making a drink or you're delivering a during cutting and lighting a cigar for somebody. So, oh, absolutely, people just jump in and do that, and it, it's it's a great community. Yeah, it's awesome. So we're gonna get right back to Brent, the train car. Camilla, she wasn't able to join us because we just had a freak winter storm, but we love her too. Oh, yeah. She's she, part of the family team. She, we wouldn't be here without right. her. So she, she's, yeah. So anyway, uh, we wanted to say thank you so much to our Patreons. You guys make the show possible every week. We have so much fun hanging out with you guys in the Discord. Uh, I mean, dude, if you want to find a rowdy crowd, our Patreons are a rowdy crowd. We've nicknamed them the Light 'em Up Crew. Light 'em Up Crew. And they smoke a ton of cigars. And they're all over the United States, man. I mean, California, Texas, uh, Boston, New York. I mean, just everywhere. It's cool. And, you know, being able to hang out with those guys, it's like a morning ritual. I get on every morning. 
while I'm drinking my coffee, smoking a cigar, and Ooh. chat with those guys. And it starts rowdy. And it finishes rowdy in the evening. It's crazy. <laughs> so we want to say thank you to all you guys. Uh, we do have a screen at the end with our Patreon's name so everybody can see who our Patreon's on. Thanks for them, giving them a shout out. Uh, we got a couple of new Patreons we want to mention. Uh, we've got the Young Buck. He goes by his real name's John, but he goes by Young Buck because that's what go. we called him because he's 20. <laughs> he's, I think he's 21. Wow. He's hanging out with all these old dudes. Yep. And then uh, we got a new guy named Gunny, who's a retired Marine gunner. So we want to say thank you to him. He is uh, one of our upper echelon king memberships. And then Luke Henshaw, which we call Cool Hen Luke. He's go. also a king level. And if you watch the video mm -hmm. starting next week, if you're a king level, we take an 8 by 10 photo that you send us, and we hang it on the studio wall, and it will be there forever. That's cool. Yeah, That's so cool. we want to say thank you to Patreons. Thank you, guys. And then let's talk about our sponsors right quick. We got three great sponsors. The Leaf sponsors the show. That's our home shop. We're there on a regular basis. And, dude, I can't wait for you to get over there. I haven't seen see the, the new, new shop. shop. I want to see the new shop. I'm excited for Jay. I think like, that's awesome. Like what I thought it was going to be and what it turned out to be is night and day difference. And it's night and day difference way way in a better way that's you know what cool. i mean that's awesome because it, when you're sitting back watching someone design a shop you're like oh no i do this oh no i do that and then when he opened it i was like dude you nailed it this is perfect <laughs> and the humidor dude i want to say it's like maybe 18 by 32 oh wow and it's packed that's awesome and it's all spanish cedar mm -hmm. I mean, you don't even so want to look. Oh, you in. walk in and you're like the angels. What? <laughs> so uh, they take good care of us. If you uh, want to visit them, they are at 1166 North 2nd Street in Abilene, Texas. If you're on the interstate, you should definitely swing on by. I promise you, you'll enjoy a nice, relaxing atmosphere. They've got cigars. They've got cigar accessories. They've got pipes. They've got pipe smoke. they got a great lounge. And they have... To me, the best coffee in Abilene. I was going to make sure you mentioned the coffee. Oh, so. dude, you've had some of their coffee. Mm -hmm. They don't, I mean, it's hard to find coffee that good. Agreed. And so, anyway, give a shout out to Jay and all those guys over there. You can look down the show notes. There's all the connectivity information available. And then also, uh, we've got Case Elegance. Have you heard of them? I'm not familiar, no. So, they do man stuff. And what I mean by that is they make boxes for watches, they do leather bags. <coughs> they do humidors and we're getting ready to do a review i know we've been saying that for like four weeks but we've had one i got covid then the winter storm it's just been a big balling up but anyway we're going to do a video review this week of the octador and it's called the octador because it's actually eight-sided really but it's a rectangle but the edges are what would you call that diagonal? Okay, like a chamfered edge or something. Sort. Right. Okay. So that creates a snug fit. And then they also inlay magnets in there so it's tight. That's cool. And it's about this tall, by about that big, and it's got a drawer in the bottom for all of your uh accessories, lighters, oh, cutters, nice. your travel case. And it also has a digital readout of your uh, humidity on the outside. So, anyway, we're giving one of those away. Oh, that's cool. And so, we'll probably throw some sticks in there for the winter to smoke, too. But go. we're going to be doing a video on that. We'll tell you how you can have a chance to win that, guys. And then we have McAuliffe Cigars. And uh, you guys, I mean, what can I say that I haven't said about McAuliffe? They make great cigars. They care about the boutique uh, scenario with your brick and mortars they are that relationship um i don't know if you know all the things they've done for their brick and mortars but it's blown away mm -hmm. then they have an ambassador program if you're not an ambassador for mccallough and you'd like to look down the show notes click on the link and it, it's free you sign up they send you your own challenge coin with your own number on it get your personalized number yeah and, and they have a great facebook group too that's just for the ambassadors and those guys are a great community i know tons of them i hang out with a bunch of them online you know isn't it online cool that you can now hang out with people that you couldn't before keeps us connected man i never thought i would have really close friends in new york mm -hmm. i've never been to new york love to go but i've never been 
So anyway, if you'd like to become an ambassador, look down the show notes. You can find a link down. Uh, that will take you over there. You can sign up and uh, get your own challenge coin and check out their line of cigars. Uh, the Medallia is my one of my go-tos, but they have a line of like 17 facings. So quality cigars. Did you know they, they have a machine that tests the draw on every stick? Really? Like that's Perdomo cool. does. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pretty cool. And you, you, you're never going to get a cigar that's plugged. And when you light up a cigar and it's plugged, what does that do to you emotionally? It's disappointing. <laughs> it's disappointing. Because like, that's, that's the very get-go. And you're just like, oh. So anyway, all those sponsors are in the show notes. Check them out. Click on the link and uh, go check them out, man. We appreciate it. So let's get on with the train car. When did you open? We opened up December of 2016, so it's been over four years now. Wow. Isn't that crazy? It's that been, is crazy. It's been a fun ride. It's been a crazy ride. That is true. That I is mean, too true. <laughs> you know, I because when I think about the train car, the one thing that I think about, first of all, you're, you have a lounge that's like no other. It's actually in train cars. That's right. I mean, that's awesome. You have a very good selection of cigars. Like, I've been to lounges that have humidors that are like five times, six times bigger than what you have. And I walk through there and I can't hardly find cigars I want to smoke. <laughs> I come here and it's like, dude, you got that. Oh, wow, you got that. I mean, you're Caldwell, you're, uh, what are we smoking? Or what was I smoking? The box. The uh, soapbox. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With the dissident cigars, we've got, you know, the Oveja Negra stuff. We've got the Nica Sueño stuff, Roma Craft and Black Label, those two. Texas companies, which people love that they're a Texas company, but they've got their own factories in Nicaragua. Puente, Padron, LFD, Crowned Heads. I mean, just I can keep going down the list. Uh, our Tatuaje has been picking up finally, which is good. That's one of the brands that uh, we brought in early on. And I didn't have a lot of movement at first. We've been really, really growing with that lately. So that's been fun. Uh, Illusion as well. You know, Aguinor, everywhere so. I've been on Tatawahi, people love them once they explore the line. You know what exactly. I mean? It's like a lot of people are scared of them because it's like they've never heard of them. And it's like, oh, that's that's. And, you know, the price points a little above most. So people are like, I've never heard of that. I'm not going to spend that. But then when they get around people who have smoked them, it's like, oh, People are talking about these sticks. It's got a bit of a, I don't know if cult's the right word, but I mean, it's, it's pretty close. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty close. And then you have Roma Craft coming out your ears. Oh, yeah. So you've always had Roma. Did well, you start with Roma? Not when we opened, but as soon as we were able to. And uh, we only had seven facings to start, and we've got, you know, 40 plus now as far as they were. Wow. They were able to work with us. And that was one of the things that there's some brands I just can't bring in here because they have set requirements. And my shop can't accommodate that. Sure. Uh, just I don't I don't have the space operating out of train cars. They're internal, nine foot by forty nine foot. I only have so much space. And so if someone wants to get in with us, they have to be able to be flexible. I'm I, I've had to be extremely flexible to keep this business to get it started, to build it. And we, we couldn't just set a plan, <clears throat> never diverge from the plan. I mean, we had to we had to tuck and roll wherever we needed to and move and shake and it's been great, but the vendors that worked with us, it's really worked out in their favor as well as ours. Oh, so. absolutely. I mean, they've grown their brand here at your shop, and you've expanded the line. I mean, with Roma, you have 40-something yep. facings. Yeah, we have every we have every single core size, and then uh, LE's, you know, whatever we have keeps coming through. We've, uh, you're doing the, the Venus right now. Which yeah, let's Solomon. talk about what we're smoking right quick. So. I'm smoking the uh, Roma Craft. You said it's the Venus. It's the Venus Aquitaine. Yeah, which well, is yeah it's the Aquitaine, Solomon. which I love Aquitaine. It's one of my go-tos when I'm smoking Roma. And I've smoked just about all of them. I think, no, well, I've never smoked the Sabretooth. Okay. Isn't that, which, what line is that? That's the Aquitaine also, the, the Barber Pulled Aquitaine. Okay, I've never right. had that one. But I tell you what, I, I've had the uh, Black Irish, mm-hmm. fantastic cigar. And then one of my other favorites is the, uh, the genetic deformity. Mm. I'm a big fan of that cigar. You know, it's it's not too big because that's a strong blend. The Neanderthal is phenomenal, but it's got some strength to it. It's really easy <clears throat> to smoke, so it's a little bit deceiving. But yeah, it'll. That's why I like there. the. You know, I don't even. I guess genetic deformity is what you call it. Well, that that one there is actually it's a barber pole and it's got different wrapper. Normally, the Neanderthal has the Mexican San Andreas wrapper on it, and so. 
the genetic deformity is a barber pole and it's got a different wrapper so it's a really different taste than the other neanderthals i did not know you can get that small size so i've got the hoxd the sgp and the hn always in stock well i say always unless they're Unless you want to buy out. them all for me, I will. I will gladly sell out on any cigar I have if you're willing to buy them all. I, yeah, I know you are. So let's talk about. You know, you've been in business roughly four years, and I mean, really, you guys kind of hit a home run coming out of the gate. And one of it, I think, one of the reasons is because you guys didn't have a cigar shop here, and then it was a combination of you have a very unique location. You have the train cars, but just outside you have a full patio, and then you walk down in the courtyard. I mean, how many people that have been here at one time? Hundreds. You can have hundreds of people here smoking cigars, having drinks. Y'all got a um, stage for live, live music. music. So, yeah, over over two years, we did the stage. It was a, a two-stage build. <laughs> so we built the stage the first year, and then the next year, we wound up building the canopy over the top. I say uh, first year, after a year in business, the first year of music, People, I, I had a picture the other day I just shared of a friend, George Bancroft, a really great musician. And he's playing. He's just standing on the patio in front of the caboose. Nice. And then, you know, a year later, we had the stage. And next year, we went up with the covered roof over the top of the stage. And it's just been growing. Very cool, man. I'll tell you an artist, if you haven't heard of him, you need to try to get here. All right. Charlie Crockett. I'm not familiar. I'll have to look that up. Look so. him up. He's playing at the Lumber Yard in roscoe in roscoe in april the 30th i believe all right i'll be there there you go so anyway i don't i don't know how famous he is because a lot of i don't know anybody that knows him unless you know me or you know jake smith because we're the only two people i know that know of him but he he, he he's like tw- i want to guess he's probably 23 but he plays country music that's like from the 50s and 60s and 70s really yeah that's cool got his own style looks kind of different but he's Great musician, great artist. So you knocked a home run out of the gate earlier, but tell us about some of the struggles, you know, as time's gone by. All right. Well, that was actually one of the interesting things is that right from the bat, you know, I wanted a cigar shop. That was my thing. My wife, Camilla, she's brilliant. We're a really good team. And she said, you know, it's a small town. We knew that. We didn't know if a cigar shop would do it. So Right off the bat, she had said that, you know, we need to be a cigar bar and do the drinks ourselves instead of someone bringing their own bottle of scotch, their own um, whatever. If, if any drinks you have here, you have to buy them through us. Right. And so it works out really well for us that it's a cigar bar, but it's not a bar that sells cigars. We're still a cigar bar, a cigar shop where you can also get drinks and you can have high end scotch. You can have bourbons. You can yeah, because I, I don't even consider you to be a bar. I consider you to be a cigar shop exactly. that sells alcohol. That, that's how I want us to stay. I'd much. Re- I don't want to be a bar with cigars. I want to be cigars with a bar. And, and, and that's the and way I've always seen you guys. Way. Exactly. It's mm-hmm. like, and I, when I tell people about this shop, most of the time I tell them about the cigars, and then at the end I go, "Oh yeah," and they sell alcohol. <laughs> and we do get that. We'll get people that come in and have no idea that we had a bar because they thought it, they were coming for the cigars, and that makes me proud. That's fun. But the alcohol helped keep our doors open right off the bat, and as we did that, so it was it was interesting because this this year with COVID, then the alcohol is actually what shut our doors, and that we were actually at a bigger disadvantage than had we had just been a cigar shop. But we never would have been to that point to be disadvantaged had right. we not had the bar to start. So it, it was it, a catch twenty two. It really was a catch twenty two on that. But uh, not being able to open our doors, even to sell a cigar, because we had that that fifty one percent mixed beverage alcohol permit was. It was it was dangerous against what we were doing as a business. So we did have to uh, we had to, again change and we cut our bar in half. We turned it sideways, more like a counter. Uh, we added uh, kitchen supplies. Wound up doing food service. Uh, we do a charcuterie tray, which is like meats and cheeses, dried fruits, uh, crackers. It's delicious. Uh, we'll do lavash. It's a Mediterranean dish. It's kind it's kind of like a pizza, and it's nothing like a pizza. It's a flatbread cracker with Havarti cheese melted on top, and then different toppings. And then we'll also do uh, snack mix so and pizza popcorn. without the tomato paste with no sauce. Yes, so there's no sauce. So it's uh, one of my one of my good friends and customers. <coughs> he jokes and calls it uh, adult lunchables. <laughs> well, no, that's the charcuterie. The other one, like, but yeah, it's cheese and crackers. But it's a delicious cracker with melted cheese, meats, veggies on top of it, and it's it's delicious. It really is good. And we've always wanted to do food. 
So but when did you start doing food? We did that in August of 2020. Okay. And we had to do that and switch over and get our uh, our restaurant permit. So we're a restaurant bar and grill, which was basically to help you stay open. It, we had to do that in order to be able to in order to be able to reopen. And so adding and you more think cost about there. you think about what's the reasoning behind the government policies to make you do that? Because what's the difference between the shop now and a year ago? Your well, customers are coming for cigars. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they're coming for their drinks. They're not coming for a cheese tray. They may love the cheese tray, but that's not, hey, let's go to the train car and get a cheese tray. Mm-hmm. They, they never say that, I promise you. <laughs> but they say, let's get a cigar and a drink, and hey, we'll have a cheese tray. Exactly. And we do like having the food. We've, like I said, we've wanted to do the food for a long time because if people are here and you know, you're having a cigar, it's a little bit stronger than you thought. You might say, you know what, I need to stop smoking, and I need to get myself a bite to eat. Well, now having food available, they don't have to leave my business. They can keep on being my customer instead of leaving to be someone else's customer, which is nice. But every time we've run the numbers, it didn't make financial sense. It just wasn't. It was, it was a losing venture until it was perfect financial sense. You can't be open if you're not doing it. <laughs> right. Hey, this makes sense all of a sudden. Right. So. I was frustrated. I, I dealt with a lot of anger for a while. I'm, I, I, I I'm, talked I'm to you on the phone some, a few but, times, oh yeah, and I was, I was like, I felt bad for you because I could hear your anger, but I understood why. Yep. Because it was like, we are supposed to be supporting mom and pop brick and mortars, and the government is making it to where I can't. Mm-hmm. And then you see what the government is doing to help other entities. And it's like, well, how come they don't care about me? Mm-hmm. I mean, and they basically put it to where you couldn't have employees because they made it to where employees would make more money if they stayed home. Yeah, that was another issue. Yeah. Well, one of the things that still I just, you know, that's anytime you get government involved anywhere, it seems to be that that issue that you get more government, more regulation. My argument was you have a drink, you have a cigar, you keep consuming you keep using having a drink out of that bottle out of that glass nobody's touching that glass it's not getting dirtier but bars couldn't be open but you could go to a restaurant and drink just as many drinks so you'd have the exact same consumption but now you got a plate of french fries in the middle and we're all touching them our hands are touching our phones they're touching our table our chairs touching the food it goes into our mouth people are then licking their fingers Grabbing the next bite, doing it, you're reaching into the same basket of it. And I don't think they should have closed down restaurants either. That's not what I'm saying. I'm right, saying they right. shouldn't have closed the other direction. Choose. And, and, you know, I can understand the shutting down a club where people are dancing and everybody is just all over the place. There's no way to social distance in that scenario. Mm-hmm. But a bar where I go in, where I can sit down and have a smoke and a drink... There's no difference between that and a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I understood your pain and I understood your frustration. And that's one of the reasons that we, you know, try to tell people about you, you know, because I knew you were struggling as a business owner. And so that started in what, about March or April? It was March. So it started right out of the gate. March 18th. Wow. And you were telling me earlier that the the shutdown for you guys came before there were even any cases here. At, yeah. At one point when we were closed in the beginning there, there wasn't an active case in our community and our business was closed. And that was what was so frustrating. And it, I, I, I'd say it's an analogy to boarding up all of our windows and closing our businesses when a hurricane's hitting Houston, that we needed to be ready to move and we need to be ready to respond to it. But a carte blanche across the board, and nobody knew what they were doing. You got to give them that. I mean, nobody knew what it was the first time. Nobody lived a hundred yep. years. Yep. So you know, you you give them some grace for a little while, but then you expect common sense to come back around. And mm-hmm. sometimes it does, and sometimes more often it doesn't. It didn't. <laughs> right. So you've got the food available now. So you guys have been back open since when? In August, the end of August. So we've been open since the end of August. And we opened in between on there, so we had to close, then we got to reopen. And I don't have the dates, remember, but like about sometime in June again, the governor reclosed bars, and that was just no no warning. So we made it through. We were doing that. We've keep on. We've kept on. We've keep on. Keep on keeping keep on. on. Keeping on. So we've kept on making whatever changes and adaptations we had to. 
Another thing that we did is we, we did go online. So we do have our cigars online. They can go to shop.thetraincar.com. And I'm getting more and more of our cigars on there. Uh, a lot of our, a lot of our brands are, but there's some that I haven't got on that I keep realizing. And hey, man, I got to get, get this on there. If someone wants to buy it and they call me, um, I'll build it online. I'll get the photos. I'll get it built and put onto there. But, um, that's been pretty fun. And we've done some different deals with that. And that was, that was a difficult decision too. I wanted to be a brick and mortar. I didn't want to be an online retailer. I was, my, the whole point of brick and mortar is not going online. Right. But I think it is a difference when it's just, when the brick and mortar is just extending itself through the online versus well, being. Well, and that's the way we support online sales. Mm -hmm. If you're a brick and mortar, um, more power to you because you have to compete at some level online to support the local you know what i mean yep. and so like jay has started doing that more and they don't really have a website where you can order online but they have a website where you can call so yep. you know and i've seen that evolution in jay and the leaf just over the last probably year mm -hmm. same with you you guys have to adapt to what is thrown at you and so oh yeah 12 months ago right now I don't think I would have thought about it. Thought about putting my, I mean, we talked about it, but I, and it would have been a cool idea, but I had a, like, an, an ethical issue with it almost. But I've, I've changed my perspective and paradigm. Part of it's, you know, survival. But on the other side, if I got a guy that's in Minnesota and he calls me and he says, Hey, man, I heard that you have a box of, you know, Chromag EMH. Can I buy those? I wasn't going to tell him no. Right. So the, the, the online is just not having to answer that phone and do it, which I, I still love that in person, whether it's face to face over the phone, I enjoy that, but you can't do that. Or if I'm talking to you on the phone right now, Luke can't give me a call and, and buy a cigar from me because I'm talking to Rob right now. So the internet. And when you're does, talking to Rob, you don't put him on hold. We don't put him on hold. We don't, we don't tell him we'll call him later. Whatever. <laughs> we got to stroke that ego. <laughs> it's little. It doesn't take long. Ego's an ego. So, so how's it been since you were able to open back in August? How much of your business has come back? I mean, cause you were doing, you know, I want to go back before we get to that. Cause you guys were doing some badass events. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that was one of the things that when I thought of events, I thought about you guys because y'all were doing some cool stuff. And so have you done any events since August? No. Um, well, that's we, we did a virtual event with, with Drew Estate and we had some people that came live and sat outside on the patio and did that. And it, it was very successful still. But I miss doing events the way we used to and having really cool events with our cigar events. Who cooked the steak? We'd have music Wasn't that events. L LFD? Uh, that was LFD and Crowned Head. So Jonathan Carney and Brian McGee came out and uh, they had the steak off. Yeah. That was cool. And that, that's kind of transformed now, which is cool. They've kept doing it and they, they're doing the uh, gourmet meat sessions on YouTube and you can actually watch that on Mondays and they do that. Uh, Fred Rui joins in, uh, formerly Nomad Cigars. And then um, for the steak off, um, it was just, it was a blast and, uh, there was audience choice. There was, uh, and who, who won? So Carney won. Nice. Yeah. So he, he beat the Texan, but uh, no. Brent's drank a lot since then. <laughs> That's a long time ago. I don't think he did. I think McGee won. That's been about three years ago, huh? Yeah. No, 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 no. That was uh, a year ago, September. Oh, wow. My goodness. I don't know. We're going to have to have them come back and compete off, but. So it was, I should know this. This is horrible. I should have, we're going to have to edit this. No. You didn't know. <laughs> we don't edit on this We show. don't edit it out. So we, when we make an ass of ourselves, we show our ass. <laughs> That's right. So, so, and so you haven't been able to do any events. So have you looked at events coming up? I mean, or where are you we're at? We're trying to work on that. And I think we will be able to do this year. It was McGee who won though. So, okay. Yeah. Hats so, off to McGee. Oh yeah. It, and it was good. So, um, Let's see here. We're planning on planning events. I think we're going to probably have like another Drew Estate virtual event, and that'll be April 8th as long as nothing changes, but it's going to be virtual, and that's how Drew Estate's doing theirs. Um, I, I'd like to work with some of our other vendors. I'm going to be working with Romacraft. I'm going to work with uh, Oveja Negra. I want to get a black label event, and then all of our other vendors who we do events with, we want to get that going. I don't know what their company's policies are yet, right? and I'm not sure. Some of it's that that 
social perspective of it that you don't want to be looking like you're being irresponsible either. Even if you're doing everything safely and doing it right, that it can be a real, you know, well, I guess the social media world can get offended Twisted. by everything now. So, Yeah, and that can go fast. Oh, yeah. So we want to do it safe. We want to do it right. But I think that we were, are going to be able to get that going again. Um, we need to get live music going again. We have live music here normally Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. As long as everything goes right, we're hoping to start live music again on St. Patrick's Day this year. Oh, nice. So that'd be pretty exciting. Get now, what day of the week is that? I think it's a Wednesday this year, which is oh, okay. kind of off for that, but it'd be a, a fun way to start. And uh, that, that's been what we've done before. Instead of starting huge, I think it could be a pretty good turnout still. But even opening, instead of opening in the middle of summer with great weather, we opened up in, in December. And the reason we opened up in December was it allowed us to get your to, feet on the ground, to get our feet without just people everywhere just jumping and going crazy. So. Right. You want to be able to meet the demand and you grew yourself into that exactly. because if you would have started in summer with live music, a bar and cigars, you would have got hammered. We might not be able to handle the people. We wouldn't, right. we wouldn't be able to get our, get our, get our groove. Now you remember, I guess it's been about a year and two months ago, maybe four months ago, a year and four months ago, I was talking about doing a cigar talk event. Mm hmm. I am so thankful I pulled the plug on that because that was right in the smack of COVID. Oh, you, you could have lost a lot Dude. of money, unfortunately. Because I was going to do that in April. Mm -hmm. I would take a cleaning on that one. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, it's, it's a blessing that that came to not happen. Instead of saying it didn't happen, this hasn't happened yet. It's postponed. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. And, but we'll you know, see what we, happens. we still want to do that someday, but right now we're just concentrating on getting the show out each week. Exactly. You know what I mean? Kind of like you're open every day. That's right. Each day is its own day. Mm -hmm. So tell us about some of the hot stuff you've been smoking. Oh man, I've been jumping all over. But I mean, one of my fallbacks, as you mentioned, is Rumblecraft. I smoke that quite a bit. Um, I've been smoking a fair amount of foundation cigars, that CT-142. Uh, love that cigar. Uh, the Wei Wednesday, both uh, the original with the blue band on it, as well as the Maduro with the red band. Loving those. LFD, uh, can't keep someone on the shelf, which is you know everyone's issue within reason, but I just try to carry heavy on any of that. and um, as, long, as long as you keep enough on order. What's, what's your go-to on the LFD? Probably the Chapter 2. Oh, dude, I two. love the chapter two, too. Mm -hmm. That that wrapper, it's mm -hmm. like a velvet, mm -hmm. nice, rich colored brown. It's not super dark, and it's not light. It's red. Exactly, it's, and it's beautiful. It is. I've got two customers who really love the Colorado Oscuro number no. four, and so we try to keep that available in stock, but that's an interesting cigar because, you know, once a year you get to order it and then you can get it throughout the year, but it's... You know, if you don't plan right, it, and it, it's I can I can understand the sympathy for a shop who says, "Well, I just want to get more." Well, if you didn't order, you don't know, but you don't know where your customers are going to shift and change, right? And say that you say, "Oh, I need to get two hundred or five hundred or a thousand sticks this year, whatever the number is," and the demand drops or the demand doubles or triples. That it is what it is, unfortunately. And that's why you carry a lot of good cigars, and so we've just slowly been working on. I mean, since 2018, though, building our inventory and having back stock and having that so we can weather. I mean, when we started, I didn't have a backup box of every cigar that I carried. Sometimes what was on the shelf was what I had. And if you came in and said, I want to buy a box of them, I couldn't do it to start. But, I mean, we were on limited budget. We were on limited space. And uh, been working on growing that quite a bit. And so that's a lot more fun, too. Well, so. when we get done, I've got a couple of cigar people I want you to talk to. Mm-hmm. I think they're doing amazing work, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, so how engaged are you and Camilla now? Is Camilla still here all the time, or not all the is time? She busy um, doing other things. Well, so our kids are all—we have three children, and they're they're all homeschooling now. So oh, that's, nice! That's a lot of work on that. But Camilla was a teacher before, and so I mean, she she's very passionate about education, and I think she can give them a, a better education than they could get in a in a you know cookie cutter. Nothing against public school, but I think that what she's doing is so amazing for our children. Does she need me to get her a copy of the star test? No, I think we'll pass on that. <laughs> I got a brother that's a teacher. I might be able to get him to slip me one. So, but, but she is up in and out still and gets to do that. And she's, 
uh, the most passionate one still on the, the hospitality. I, I'm big on it, but she is, she's got a knack for that. And she's the reason we're so successful with our she's hospitality. She's the brains of the so. operation. <laughs> And the looks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, both. This probably should have been uh, uh, an audio-only episode yeah. since I don't have well, well, when I got here and found that out, I was like, if I could have had my choice who was watching the kids, you might not be sitting here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so you're looking at doing some events starting in, was that March? Um, March. Yeah, we'll have some music in March, uh, that, at least a virtual event in April, but it'll probably still be where you can come in here as well. But I believe with that one, you do have to be logged in on the Zoom in order to qualify for some of the swag and prizes and things. Okay. But you can log in on your phone. You can be logged in on a laptop, things like that. So yeah, you don't meet so. anybody now that doesn't already have Zoom. Exactly. It's just built in on their phones. And right. Things, you know, so. so that's cool. So what about cigars? I mean, we talked a little bit about what you've been really enjoying smoking lately. Uh, what are you looking for over the next few months as far as cigar companies and what you're looking for? Well, hopefully... I believe it's May 21st, but this is uh, the next the next trip that I want to be taking is Weasel Fest mm. at, at Roma Craft, and so hopefully that's me coming out. Is that going to be and May so, 21st? I believe it's the 21st. I, I I'm not. It might be the 29th something, but it's May. It's May of 21. I couldn't tell you the exact date. But, okay. Uh, um, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Now, have you been be before? So I've been to the headquarters before. I I had tickets for the last Weasel Fest, and then they had to postpone it right. because of COVID. But I did get the boxes, so I've got the Weasel Fest box and uh, the same shape that you were smoking right now here, but with all eight blends. Oh, and nice! It's it's awesome. I'll, I'll, I got a box. I'll show you. So <laughs> he I'll says, "Show you." <laughs> yeah, I've got a good friend and Patreon member uh, Z, and he loves Roma Craft. He's been showing me all these limited edition boxes that he's been getting. So. He, he would probably love to come here, too. And the cool thing is he lives in California, but he's in Texas pretty regular. Oh, really? So I'm getting him to come down to the Leaf, but we talked about the train car yesterday because I told him we we're coming over here. And one of our other Patreons was like, oh, I've been there. It's a great shop. And went, you know, went on and oh, that's on. That's awesome. And you know what he said? Pick up some Island Jim while you're there. <laughs> so you're well known for being the guy with Island Jim. We, we always have it in stock. It's good stuff. So Well, you know, I love that stick just because it's, when you smoke it, it's like you're taking on a certain level of laid back, easy going spirit. You know what I mean? Wahoo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what do you got planned for the actual train car over the next, I mean, say year, two years? Well, Are, um, any um, expansion if, any if we can get additions? back on sort of if we can get back on track this year if, if uh just not uh throttled down whoa, whoa. that was up high that's on fire <laughs> uh what we wanted to do last year so january february of 20 were amazing it looked like it would be a great year and so our our porch that's up on top looking out over the patio we've got those panels that we have custom built out of lexan and um one by fours around that Instead of having those panels that come up and down, what we really want to do is have retractable garage doors with the glass windows in them. Oh, nice. Where we could always enclose the porch and, and uh, open it up again. Just, you know, any and whoever's working solo could be doing that. So, you know, you're having a summer afternoon and a rain comes in or a cold oh, front. Oh, because right now it's we can close it down. It, I mean, not it, a it one takes, person. No, it's, it's a three-man, four-hour job to do that. Well, so. it looks super nice. Well, thank you very much. And what I love about it is you have this nice patio. Was there like three or four tables right there? Yep. And it's like you're covered, so you're not sitting in the sun, but you can see everything out. Mm-hmm. And in the winter, it's warm enough to where you can still sit out on the patio. Other than last week, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about that for a minute. You guys know Texas was hit by a major winter storm, and I, I know there's lots of people who still have not recovered. You were talking about earlier you got another water line busted. Yep. We had, uh, right before we started recording, uh, my son found water bubbling up from the ground. A, a pipe underground had must have frozen and burst at our house. So well, How old is he? He is... He's nine years old uh, tomorrow. I'm impressed that he would even notice. Oh, yeah. He's he's very observant. Because when I was so. nine, I would have been like, oh, cool. There's a good place to start digging a hole, you know. Yeah, play in the mud. Yeah. So I'm impressed by that. But anyway, how was the winter storm affecting the shop? Um, it did. It took out power only a little bit for us. But with the rolling blackouts, we didn't we didn't open and we had pipes freeze. So we had we didn't have water at all all those times. So you couldn't open without having 
running water for your bathrooms and things like that. So we actually wound up having to close Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We were able to reopen this past Thursday. And so it, it was it was just good to be open again. And I, I would meet somebody up here if they needed cigars, something like that. I'd come up every day and I'd be checking on pipes, checking on power, um, just keeping an eye on the business. It's like it's like a baby. You got to check on it. You know, the business is right. It's like it's a, our fourth child. Oh, fourth, fifth and sixth. That doesn't grow up. Right. Ever. <laughs> yeah. So how about your staff? Do you have a new staff compared to when you were open last year? Is it all new staff or do you have some people that you still had before from the COVID? So we we we're, we have a very skeleton staff right now. Um, just haven't started rehiring. We don't want to hire to have to re-let people go. I mean, we're trying to keep them with their hours, keep that going. Um, Paula and Alicia have both been here over a year now. But Alicia had started just before COVID, basically, and so that was real real iffy that, you know, she just started and then all of a sudden we had to start, you know, closing during, during last year. And that was tough. And then, uh, got a young man named AJ and he, he's really good. He started out as a bar back for us, but he's shown an interest in the cigars and stepped up into doing some bartending, cigar tending as well. But I've just got the three staff at the moment and that's, it's been a long time since we've only had three people working for us. Yeah. Cause so, I think the last, well, Maybe the last time I was here, you had several people on staff. Went up to a dozen at some points, and so wow. yeah, it's it's sad as far as what it's done. <clears throat> we uh, we'd have up to eight people working at during one shift sometimes during Friday Saturdays. You know, a year ago, a um, year and a half now, I suppose, but summer of 2019, we'd have you know bar back, two bartenders, two cocktail waitresses, an outdoor bar, and a manager on hand, like. That's yeah, because I difference. remember when me and Tim came down here, and there was a live. I think there was two different live bands that night, but you had a big staff. And I mean, all of them were busy nonstop, nonstop. And I mean, it was, it, it was a big time. In fact, that was the time me and Tim came down and got a hotel room. Cause I was like, I ain't going to want to drive. We're going to be have a good time. It's, it's too much fun. We can't leave. Well, dude, cause y'all's cabanas down on the end. Mm-hmm. Those are so cool. I love that. You can we're, listen to music. You can still have a conversation. At the end of this show, we're going to actually have a walk around and we're going to walk around and film everything so you can get an idea of what it's like to go to the train car. And it's the middle of the afternoon. There's not going to be a lot of people here, which is kind of cool. So I can walk around taking video. But usually on the weekends, I remember this place was packed. Mm -hmm. I mean, really, I mean, is there another place in Big Spring that people go? I mean, to just relax and have fun there are but nothing i don't think there's anything that has the same feel that we are so i mean our our tagline what we're going for is casual social interaction at its finest and if you were to pick one word to describe the train car um it's been this way since we opened it's relax that you know sometimes it doesn't seem to make sense you know you got live music and people everywhere and relax right but that's what it is we're not trying to get this um you're not doing a rave yeah it, it still you're able to relax, have a good time, meet up with friends, sit on your own. Um, well, you know what also is just great spread too. Spread out is you have a unique environment because, like I said, you've got what like six cabanas at the end, mm-hmm. so you can be with your own group and not really be engaging with all the other people that are here. And then you have different places in the courtyard where people can sit together, and it's more open. And then you have the patio, and I know people that sit on the patio always sit on the patio. Mm-hmm. And then during all of that, me and Tim came in here and sat in the train car lounge car, mm-hmm. and it's nice and quiet. You can relax and talk. So you provide an environment for just about any type of experience. Exactly. And that's what makes this place really cool. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, barring extreme weather, uh, the, the lounge – doesn't get as much foot traffic as I as I would like to see. I love sitting down here in the lounge where we're recording right now, and it's, it's this is just, my favorite place to be. Same here, but a lot of people like that outdoor area. Sure, it's nice. I mean, we're in Texas, and we got great weather most of the time. I mean, at least once or twice during the day, we'll have good weather. Right, in and out <laughs> in the morning and in the evening in the summer. <laughs> but y'all get that that kind of a cool breeze in the evening, don't you? We do. See, we don't get that in Abilene. Oh, really? It's just hot. Just hot. That's no fun. Yeah. So you guys are going to, you told me just when I talked to you, I think a couple of days ago, you said y'all were getting ready to redo the furniture in here. We've, we've started on that now. 
So we've we've uh, replaced the love seat at the end and then four chairs so far. And then depending on, so everything is hard to find right now. Uh, I have a friend who owns a furniture store, was trying to get through him and he couldn't find, couldn't find. And pretty soon he said, if you can find it anywhere, get it. So we couldn't find everything, but we found the first third of the lounge right now. We did that portion. And we're going to work our way through. We're going to do some some more kitchen remodel as well because of the food that we're doing now. Um, right now in the bar car, there's three panes. There's the window and then the door and then the window. And we want to switch it so it goes door, window, window, and we can move our bar four foot forward. Oh, nice. Three, three foot, probably three and a half. Yeah. And then um, the goal is that once all of our, you know, Hopefully the world moves beyond COVID and COVID life and COVID restrictions uh, where the bar L's it's up against that window, but we want a window that opens and closes. So once again, you can sit at the bar at the train car because there is no bar seating any longer. If you notice, we used to have the bar seating when you'd walk right, the on the backside. All that's gone. When, and we, we saw, we saw the writing on the wall. We knew that wasn't going to be a, a two week, three week thing. It was be a long time. And so we just restructured how we were set up to, to function best without having that space wasted. And so once I can get that door moved, the problem is the doors and windows in here are, they're old. And so trying to find the right pieces to get that moved over, we're not sure how easy that'll be. So we've had a couple glass guys trying to get us an answer, but so far I haven't gotten a response from anybody on making it doable. I figured you'd just watch a YouTube video and do it yourself. We talked about it and <laughs> until I started looking at it and I was like, this is, this is beyond me. Those, those panels of glass are heavy. Uh, and I don't want to drop one. And then all of a sudden, what do I do when I don't buy. have a glass guy who can just do it? And I've already gone around him. Mm. He's not going to he's not going to drop everything to fix it for me. So. I thought maybe you're going to put just like those cowboy swinging doors. And that, that's a thing. That's a thing. <laughs> Everybody loves swinging doors. So what's what's Camilla doing as far as the train car right now? I mean, is she doing the marketing for you guys or is she keeping you in line? What is she, what is she doing? She definitely is the one who has to keep us in line. <laughs> she she's and the responsible one. She is, and then she also is good as far as making sure that our staff is taken care of. I mean, she's just really good about that and just the 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 personnel and the people side of it. Um she's the one who's been picking out the furniture, doing those things, doing the plans with the kitchen. We've got larger sinks and uh, like a, a glassware dishwasher we're planning to put in. If we can make that happen this year, that's that's the plan. And I think we're going to accomplish our plan this time. Nice. As long as nothing major kinks our plans this time. Yeah, spin the wheel, see what happens. Exactly. So, and, uh, and then even on even on the drink side and a lot of that stuff, as far as the consistency of the drinks and those sides, she's still more over the bar than I am. And then I'm still over the cigar side quite a bit more. And the cigar side is my my main passion in this, but I, I love it all. Yeah. So whenever like you're coming into the time of year for Texas to have a lot of more evening activities outside. So I mean, I would think that you're fixing to start seeing an increase of business over the next few months. I mean, we should be. That's the plan. Febu February is a tough month because it's cold. I mean, oh yeah, it's and this year was crazy cold, but so far mm -hmm. but in march you're gonna get cold you're gonna get some wind april you'll still have some wind but the temperature in the evening is usually just perfect exactly i mean it's like a ruba in texas in the <laughs> evenings in the spring and early summer for a week or two <laughs> yeah for a week or two and then you're in arizona exactly but no it, that's enjoyable but yeah every winter um covid no, was no exception the winter time it slows down incrementally it's it's a big slowdown in the winter our summer is you know the phrase you know make hay when the sun shines that's when we make hay that's when we gather our acorns to survive through the winter and then we we just make our way through that winter waiting again so it's, it's pretty seasonal for us uh cigars are a little bit more consistent but there are a fair amount of people who don't smoke a cigar unless they're here while they're having drinks and so the whole uh you know when in rome if you're at the cigar bar enjoy a cigar right but um, not but all in, of them in, would in, end up just smoking a cigar and coming in and buying, you know, a handful of cigars and smoking them throughout the week in their backyard that when they're at the train car, they smoke cigars when they're not, they don't. Well, so yeah, here. you know, my friend Tim only smokes cigars whenever we have a video herf mm -hmm. or he's with me. Isn't that interesting? It is. And he, he loves them when we're, we're together, but mm -hmm. he doesn't really smoke them when he's not with yep. me. And so... 
But that to be said, you guys, I, I think you'll really be gearing up and maybe 2021 is your year to recoup. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if you look at COVID even with the vaccines becoming available, I'm really hoping that we can get past that whole stigma of not being able to go anywhere and we can start getting out and being social again. Cause that's really what cigars are about is being social. Exactly. You know I mean? And don't get me wrong. I smoke some cigars by myself and I enjoy those, but my favorite c- cigar time is whenever I'm hanging out with good friends. I agree on occasion that you get that, you know, you, where you can re-energize on your own with the cigar, but for the most part, it is kind of a social activity, but I'm going to go back, like you had said, with Tim on that. And that's one of the things I think is so, it's such a good testament that cigars aren't the same as a cigarette or other tobacco products that, you know, if someone's a cigarette smoker, they're usually a cigarette smoker. Right. Where then with a cigar, it's that when someone wants to enjoy one, and I have I think I've said this before on the show even, we did a 17-day road trip with our kids, and I didn't need to be finding a place to smoke a cigar two or three times a day. I mean, right. we're busy. If, if you're not going to enjoy the cigar, you don't. Hey, you know, hide in an alley behind your behind the building. When I got the wife and the kids out. in the car, I just rolled the window down about <laughs> this you far. <laughs> you remember that, didn't you? Did mm-hmm. your parents smoke? Mm-hmm. So, you know, when you were like five or six, dad lit up the cigarette driving down the road and cracked the window about two centimeters. Yep, and you'd box. just be like, I can't <laughs> breathe. And he'd be like, the window's down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I, I kind of grew up in that era. So that's kind of the way I see it. I'm probably, well, my son can attest that I'm not the new parenting style. Yeah. I'm still old school. Of course, you know, we talked about earlier, you're 39. What are you, 52, 50. Rob? Well, no, not yet. Not yet. My wife hit 52 last week, and I'll be 52 in two weeks. Oh, there you go. You saw the fall I took. Yeah. So yeah, that, looked that was rough. I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it here. Today. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up here at the train car, but we're fixing to do a walk around video. So don't go anywhere. We'll put up the uh, thank you to all our Patreons. And then right after that, we'll have the video tour of the shop. So until next time, keep smoking. Keep smoking, baby. <laughs>